guys, King of Charm Manners. All right, so today we are going to look at why the Alolan Mug version of this thing right here, you see that slime thingy right there, is really viable in Season 2 now. Still, I mean still. Why is... Uh... Anyways, everyone's asking me, why is Alolan Mug still viable? And is it really good? In my opinion, yes. But today we are going to dive in why Alolan Mug was really good in the preseason and in Season 1. And why it's still good in Season 2, believe me. A lot of people asking me, like, yo, do you like that Amok? I love Alolan Muck. And there's a reason why it's in my line, and I will tell you all of that today. Now, let's get started. Alright, so the pros of a Alolan Muck in Ultra League are very vast, as you see here. The quick summary, poison dark typing is very unique. The reason why it's so unique is because a lot of things will do neutral damage to it. For example, Charmers. Charmers don't deal neutral damage because it's resistant, poison resistant, and it's strong. It's ty dark typing. So, in turn, it's neutral. Same thing with fighters. So, for fighters, fighting, dark is weak against fighting, and poison resistant, so therefore it's neutral. That's why it's such a great, unique typing to have. And therefore, Alola Monk's only true weakness is ground types. So, there's the Swamper may run around rapid, but we'll cover that in the cons. It has a wide coverage moveset, so you have a wide selection to go through. You have Dark Pulse, you have Sludge Wave, you also have Dunk Shot. So you want to go for that one-shot kill, or do you want something that does a lot of damage still, but you can get to it faster, which is Sludge Wave. It loves Ghost because Dark Typing, even though like how we talked about the neutral typing between Poison and Dark... Ghost, on the other hand, dark typing resists ghosts, therefore ghosts will not do a lot of damage against Alolan Muck. So it can kind of wall, it can kind of serve as kind of a wall. And it's also a great safe switch and a closer. If your lead happens to lose against Amok, there's not a lot of things Amok can't go against that will break shields or allow you to realign the match to your advantage. Now, as you saw here, as you see here, there's very few cons. It doesn't like ground types. It doesn't like earthquakes from Swamp Birds. And Shreptiles, it's happened to me before. And Drill Runs. It does not like Drill Run from Excavalier. And it's bad if it's locked into a debuff from Articuno. Or a Moonblast from a Clefable. Let's say Clefable. Or a Moonblast from the oh-so-deadly and oh-so-popular Cresselia. Alright, so now for my favorite part, the pvpoke.com. Again, if you are not donating to this website, please consider doing so. It's a free resource. It allows you and helps you train and simulate all these battles. Let you train for free. If you want to train more and do hours of battling like I do in my spare time in order to train for Go Battle League and for battling itself, this is the website to use. Please consider donating. Great website. Anyways, let's dive into it right away. So, Alolan Muck, Alolan Muck, Alolan Muck, Alolan Muck. Alolan Luck for Ultra League. Again, like I keep saying, Ultra Alolan Luck for Ultra League is very, very powerful. As you see here, overall, it serves as number 89. Now, Alolan Muck, as you see, it's very strong against a lot of, against the Cresselia and Giratina core. Now, even though Swampert does have a strong matchup against it, if you have energy advantage against a Swampert, you still have a good chance against being a Swampert. So, as you see here, it does very strong against BBML, Giratina, Cresselia, and Swampert. Overall, it's incredibly powerful as a closer, as a switch, as a lead. It has B grades as a switch and a lead, but I will demonstrate in the training sim we will do that Alola Muck is actually incredibly powerful. As a lead, you don't want to really lead with, your, with Alola Monk. It may be in the top 100. However, there are stronger leads out there. Don't recommend using it as a lead. You can lead it if you do catch a gear altered or if you do catch a Cresselia. It's very good. Like I said, it's still very good as a lead. I wouldn't do it personally. I would use it more as a closer as a switch. Because I, in my opinion, as you saw in the grades, that's where it shines the most. Overall, Muck shines the best as a closer as a switch. If you look on the switch line... For Alola Muck, it serves as level three as number 36. 36 is very strong. I would not recommend running Gunk Shot. Gunk Shot is there for its Hail Mary, but in my opinion, you want to use Sludge Wave. The reason why you want to use Sludge Wave is because Sludge, we get to Sludge Wave faster, and it does do heavy damage against fairies as well as 
Polyrath, which you're going to see is probably one of the biggest pains that you will encounter against the Lolan Muck. And if you do end up against the Swamp Rip match anyways, you want Dark Pulse. So, like I said, I would definitely recommend you do Sludge Wave in Ultra League. As a closer, it does an amazing job. It ranks at number 7, and it has, oh, as you see, number 7 as its closer, incredible matchups and the closing scenario. How many times do you see Geared altered, or do you see Cresselia in the back? Probably a lot of times. You also see Clefable as a Charmer, as a switch in, and you do see Charizards in the back as well. As a switch, Alolan Muck serves its great purpose as a safe switch because it can get, it has key matchups as a safe switch against what's the biggest pain in the butt that you see as a switch or a closer. Other than Cresselia, it's probably Registeel. As you see, it has a very strong matchup against Registeel. Straight Dark Pulsing can wall both. Cat doesn't completely wall it, but it uh, it it's able to eat Focus Blast and Flash Cannons pretty well. As far as Regi as far as against Reggie Steel, so if I, like I said, Reggie Steel and Cresselia, two big switch safe switch mons, has a very good chance against it, and very diverse. So then we have it as a switch as a closer. I use mine as a safe switch. It's an incredible safe switch. As you see, ranking in the top ten as a safe switch and as as a closer, not as a safe switch. I apologize, but as you see, as a closer with a little muck in the back, incredibly strong, incredibly powerful. Now. Let's look at the overall, let's look at the battle sims. Let's look at the multi-battle. Alolan Muck serves a lot of purpose in Ultra League because it doesn't have a lot of weaknesses. Like we saw in the pros and cons, Alolan Muck's only true weakness is actually ground typing. So unless you got me quaking in my boots, nothing's going to happen. And I will run rampant with my Alolan Muck. Well, you won't really run like super rat with Alolan Muck. Alolan Muck, like I said, is somewhat bulky. It does have some bulk, but like I said before, it you gotta you gotta be skillful at managing energy. So I put it in the cons too. You have to be kind of skilled at using energy with Alolan Muck, because Snarl its strength comes in spamming its moves with Dark Pulse and Sludge Wave, whichever moves that you use to avoid poison. In my opinion, you use Sludge Wave. For example, here's the one shield scenarios, and here's Dark Pulse Sludge Wave. As you see, you have 67%. That's not bad. If you do Gunk Shot in the One Shield scenario, get 68. So you, for Sludge Wave, you do 1% less better than a lot of matchups, but you get to a lot better, a lot faster. And Gunk Shot, although it one-shots a lot of mons, you don't really need to use Gunk Shot, especially if your opponent still has Shield. You probably won't use Gunk Shot or have time to get to a Gunk Shot. So here we go. We're going to go into the Two Shield scenario. And as you see in the two shields, 62.7 with gunshot. If you do sludge wave, this is assuming your opponent still has two shields, 65. See, you will do better in the two shields with sludge wave than you will with gunshot. Because it takes so long to get the gunshot anyways, that the things you would use gunshot against, like a last Hail Mary against, I'd say, like an Obstagoon, or if you're trying to one-shot fairies, if you look at the sim where the poison timing, because this is where you use, you'll use gunshot the most against the Lolan Muck, for example. Here's your Mucky. Here, mucky, 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 muck. There's mucky. Here's Lola Muck. And then we're going to put it against the Charmer. So let's put, let's imagine Clefable. And if you look at the matchups that it does with Clefable, Alolan and Luck will win, will win because it one shots it with Gunk Shot. <laughs> look at all those scenarios. As long as it has a shield, it wins the ones in the no shield, all it, it, you one shot it with Gunk. Gunk will just absolutely obliterate it because of all the snarls before it, and then poof. Now, it only takes six snarls to get to Gunk Shot. If you have Sludge Wave, it takes four snarls to get to Sludge Wave. Watch. Actually, I believe it's like five. Yeah, it's five. One, two, three, four, five. But you get to spam Sludge Wave faster. In any case, you win all scenarios except the Zero Shield scenario. But if you look at the scenario itself, it's only because you don't get a Gunk Shot off, but you only have eight HP left. So as long as you did a little bit of damage to Clefable, that's not a bad that's not bad at all. Like that's that's not bad at all. 8 HP left, you can farm it down, or all you really have to do was just hit it with like literally one move other than lock on, and you're good. So still very strong. Again, Sludge Wave takes one less to get to, and in some moments that can be very pivotal. Now, let's see, you have Sludge Wave and Gunk Shot, so that's Clefable. 
How about Togekiss, where we see the most, probably the most common one. Togekiss is incredibly powerful in Ultra League. It's featured in some of the top lines. But as you see, Gunk Shot will still KO it with one shot. It's incredibly dangerous. And your shield scenarios are as follows. You'll only lose the two shield, the ones, and the twos. As long, if it's up like that many shields, it's just going to charm you down. But if you have Sledge Wave, watch what happens. With Sledge Wave... You still win all you have to do is literally sledge wave it once and it's still the same scenario matchups but as you see you use up less energy and you still kill togekiss now polyrath this is where you're probably going to see the most usage of the sludge wave slash poison typing variation because with polyrath as you see here polyrath it does heavy damage you will win as long as you have le shield so as long as you have a shield up against your opponent or more you will win you don't win the ones you don't win the twos like i said as long as you are up a shield you will win same thing with gunk shot actually it might be where let's see what happens with gunk shot with gunk shot you lose scenarios because you have to get to a gunk shot because gunk shot doesn't do doesn't kill a polyrath as you see here you actually lose scenarios because you use gunk shot versus sledge wave Sludge Wave lets you win the 2 to 1s. In this scenario, with Gunk Shot, you will lose that because Polyrath will be able to hit you with the last ensuing Ice Punch, which means you are dead. Like I said, Alolan Muck, very powerful. I don't even need to tell you how it does against Cresselia and Gira A because obviously Dark Tide does well. We'll look at it anyways. So Giratina Altered, and assuming you have Sludge Wave, you will win a lot of matchups. So Giratina Altered. And then we'll look at Giratina Alter, we'll look at Cresselia, and then we'll look at Registeel. Because, like I said, fo like safe switch, safe switch, safe switch. As you see here, you win all shield scenarios against Giratina A, unless Giratina has two shields, which is freaking amazing. Just because Dark Pulse does so much damage, and you will wall it. Now that's Shadow Claw. So, that's Shadow Claw. How about the Dragon Breath variation? Dragon Breath Variation, you lose more scenarios, but you are still incredibly strong. Look at that. You lose if, as, if, as long as they have one more shield than you, but still, you still win all these other matchups, as even with the Dragon Breath Variation. So, that's Giratina A. How about Cresselia? Let's do Crash, 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 Crash. Now, for Cresselia, Alolan Luck Mins, almost all scenarios, many scenarios, not almost all scenarios, as if it's up a shield, you will lose, but look at it, you lose many scenarios because of Cresselia. Even if you don't get, even if you do get debuff once, assuming you get one debuff, you still win the matchup very handily, according to this, because like Dark Pulse does so much damage. Now let's look at Registeel. 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 If you're using a Lola Muck as a save switch, you might either see a Registeel or a Swamper. Likely a Swamper, but you'll have energy advantage to go through. A Lola the Muck wins, but you have to be careful because you only you see you have to have you have to either be up a shield, you have to be up a shield or have two to zero. So make sure you have your up a shield against a Registeel and you will win against it because you just have to literally dark pulse it to death. And you can take three flash cannons before you die, and a few more lockouts. So again, make sure you have a shield. As long as you have a shield, you will take this matchup and you will win. Be very careful though, because if you look over here, flash cannons do get there quickly. So if it does have energy advantage, depending on your Alolan Mux IVs, again, be very careful because like I said, Registeel gets there fast. Now, last but not least, here's Swampert. Now Swampert, as long as you have energy advantage, you should be able to outpace a Swampert. But, like I said, you have to have energy advantage, and you should be careful because the only scenario you truly win is the scenario where you're up a shield. You can kind of play around it if you have energy advantage, but like I said, be very careful against the Swampert. But that's, that's what showcases to you. As you see here, as a closer, the Little Muck is very strong against many of the meta, and if you manage energy well, you will do very well with it. Now let's go to the training sim over here. Here's my practice sim. I lead with Cresselia. This is my team that I use, by the way. You don't need... You, Grass Knot's good. You don't really need Grass Knot. Lead with Cresselia. And then a Muck as my safe switch. A Lola Muck. Oh, I always have a Lola Muck as my safe switch. And then I have the Sledge Wave variation. And then you have Swampert as your closer. Now, I will use Shadow Swampert. I use Shadow Swampert as my closer because I like that extra damage that you get. It's very powerful. So there you go. We get that. We go with Ultra Lead. 
champion, of course, highest difficulty, and then we'll see the battle. So now here is a little mini sh shell cast. Now you have Cresselia versus Cresselia, which is an absolutely horrifying matchup because whoever debuffs someone first essentially wins this matchup. And there are plenty of opportunities where you can actually debuff your opponent's Cresselia, or you get debuffed. I... Duh, I hate Cresselia as... I don't like using it. It's so overpowered that it feels like cheating that I use it because it's that good. Like I said, one Moonblast will flip a lot of matchups. Hopefully, I don't get debuffed on this training sim. But now, if we do end up debuffing and Cresselia ends up in the back, we have Amok. And remember, on our simulations, when we checked it out, Amok is very strong against Cresselia. So, here we go. The AI just is... Obviously, this is just a Moonblast best from hell whoever debuffs the other one first wins or whoever wins cmp will win so as you see here out of three neither of us have debuffed at all this is probably one of the most horrifying matches if you get the mirror like look at your ivs and make sure you take a look at health because you might be able to squeeze out this matchup if you have better ivs than your opponent because you will live the ensuing moon blast but you're really risking the biscuit because of the debuffs as long as you debuff once everything's it gets really weird, or it just gets really sweaty. Cresselia, again, loses to Alolan Muck, just because dark typing is very strong. You also outpace Cresselia with, with... You also outpace Cresselia with Alolan Muck. So as long as you have energy advantage, like, you're good. You can also tank quite a few... Not quite a few, but you can tank one or two Moonblasts comfortably with Alolan Muck, depending on the situation. And then you'll still have enough time to play with enough, like, time and energy to play with for the next mod if you are able to successfully take out what's in front of you and if you have great energy management skills as you see here my opponent does get the debuff that's really unfortunate now this is okay either way because we have we will ab we are able to farm down this Cresselia. my opponent either has to elect the shield or give up switch advantage if they give up a shield and let me die i can actually send in muck so they do we do grab a shield that's great I'm not going to shield this one because we do have a muck. So we're going to get energy advantage. This one talking about how look, how you could really use a muck to your advantage. So here we go. My Cresselia goes down. We're going to send an a muck and we're going to farm down the rest of the Cresselia. And now we're ahead on energy, which is really great. And now this is a Swamper. Now, what remember what I said about having energy advantage on a Swamper is so good, especially having shield advantage. This means this Swamper's in trouble. Our opponent has to try to either bait shields or they have to try and like whatever is in the back has to convincingly beat a Lolan Muck. I'm not going to shield this one. This is like an earthquake. I probably jacked up. No, it's a hydro cannon. That's great because I can eat a hydro cannon. As long as you call the C, you could you could tank quite a few. I can tank hydro. I can tank one hydro cannon, but I have to block the ensuing the ensuing ones. But as you see here, we have a huge energy advantage. So I love about Alola Muck. The Swamper matchup is not that bad. That's a lot of reason why people are getting turned off with using Alola Muck. At least from what I've noticed, is because a lot of people are like, "Oh, Swamper." But as you see here, you're actually you do very well against Swamper. Our opponent's probably gonna win CMP. Yep, they're gonna shield this one, and I can expect my opponent to switch out. Now, here's what's great about Alola Muck. You, if you have great energy management, you can kind of overfarm a little bit. One, two. All right, we're going to fire just to be safe. But as you see, well, you can overfire with a Swampert. Now that we have energy advantage. And you have a lot of energy for whatever comes in in the back. And I'm guessing it's a gear A. Law, oh, beautiful. My opponent does not have any shields. This is great. We're going to fire off a Dark Pulse again, and look how much damage it does. Normally, you'll see Gear A as your closer or as the lead, but if you can realign, if you realign and you get to the back, look how much damage that does. It's ridiculous. I might still be able to another one. Oh, he, my opponent throws his energy. You'll see that scenario a lot because people will be really afraid that, oh, like, Muck can still get one off. And if it does get one more off, you will KO this thing. So... Next out comes out the Swamp Earth Shadow, and this match is pretty much game. All I have to do is land an Earthquake on here, and I can eat all these Shadow Claws and Dragon Claws, and I win. Remember what I said about Muck being able to wall Shadow Claws? Well, you're seeing it firsthand over here. It, as we did so much heavy damage with Muck, we were able to farm down that Cresselia with the Snarls. And all we're going to do is go for the Earthquake, and it's GG's. Again... Just seeing how good a Lola Muck is. This is how I play Lola Muck. I will kind of use it to like kind of 
if I get that crest mirror, I will farm you down with the ensuing snarls, and I'll have an energy advantage for whether my opponent has a swap burn or not. Very powerful, very great play. Like I said, very incredible. Now we're gonna do the key takeaways, and I hope you all enjoyed that. It really, sh this really showcases a low limux utility as a switch and a closer. You can use it as a lead, like I said, but with the amount of Cresselia's running around in the lead, and just how a low limux doesn't like tear up compared to other bonds, I definitely wouldn't run out of lead as a switch as a closer. I definitely approve of that. All right, so this is kind of a short summary. I've already covered a lot of how much I praise Amok and its amazing abilities in the PV poke analysis. My key takeaways, Amok is very powerful as a slave switch class closer. Like I showed you in that training sim, it's very powerful. It does very well with energy advantage and it has incredible utility. Don't sleep all alone in Muck. If you need to find a safe switch, use alone in Muck and take a look, see how you feel and how it works for your team. Some extra notes, IVs matter. A Muck, a Muck. Make sure you take a look at your Alola Muck's breakpoints and bulk points, and you take a look at its matchups. Because, like I said, I've had some scenarios where my Alola Muck, because it doesn't have great IVs, will lose certain matchups. So make sure you take a look at your Alola Muck's IVs and use that as kind of a guide to see how well you will do. And also. Make sure you guys please like, like and subscribe, share and subscribe. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. If you want me to analyze any other mod, just let me know in the comments again. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys have a wonderful day. Again, please like, subscribe. And if there's anything you want me to cover or if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments and I'll respond as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.